In organic chemistry, we are studying the different reactions that can take place across the functional groups in a carbon backbone. Models of these compounds can help to understand the spatial arrangements that can help or hinder a reaction from occurring. The main models that we use for alkanes and substituted alkanes are wedge and dash models and Newman projections. Wedge and dash models represent a three-dimensional structure and can help us see the spatial orientation or stereochemistry of atoms around tetrahedral carbons that are sp3 hybridized. In the wedge and dash model, we have solid lines, wedges, and dashes. The solid lines are bonds that lie in the plane of the page, wedges are coming out of the page towards us, and dashes are going behind the page away from us. There will always be a base in a wedge and dash model. The base will be the two carbons that show the wedges and dashes in the center with one of the solid lines going up and the other solid line on the other carbon going down. This base represents the most stable staggered conformations when we turn the wedge and dash model into a Newman projection. Newman projections will be a way to visualize the 3D spatial arrangement of atoms in a molecule by looking down a specific carbon-carbon bond. A Newman projection lets us look down one carbon-carbon sigma bond by compressing the front carbon into a point and the back carbon into a circle. When we're looking down one carbon-carbon bond using a model, we can draw what we see in a Newman projection. Instead of there being different colored circles, we're going to have actual substituents, and we have to match those to what we would see on our paper in the skeletal drawing that we're trying to transform. The front carbon with the point will have three other bonds radiating out at 120 degree bond angles. The back carbon with the circle will also have three bonds, but these will appear behind the circle 120 degrees apart. The front and back carbon in relationship to one another will be characterized by a dihedral angle. The dihedral angle is the angle between any bond on the front carbon and any bond on the back carbon. When the dihedral angle between the groups on the front and back carbons is 60 degrees apart, the conformation will be called staggered. When the dihedral angle between the groups on the front and back carbons is 0 degrees, the conformation will be called eclipsed. To be able to draw a Newman projection, we will convert a skeletal structure into a wedge and dash model first. To convert a skeletal structure into a wedge and dash model, we will find the base. The base will come from the two carbons that are referenced in the question with numbers from the parent chain or an arrow to show which carbon-carbon bond you should look down for the Newman projection. The most common base will show a staggered conformation, so we would like one bond going up and the other bond going down on the two carbons that are referenced in the question. For these two examples, the base is going to be drawn, so I have one bond going up and one bond going down on the two carbons. The two carbons that I'm looking down on the left example will come from the one carbon-carbon bond that this arrow is looking down. Once I find those two carbons, I can draw my base with one bond going up and the other bond going down. In the wedge and dash model, the base will also be going up and going down. In the example on the right, the two carbons that I'm looking down will be this one and this one. The base will be going up on one carbon and going down on the other. So my base will be right here. In the wedge and dash model, the base will be right here. One bond going up and the other bond going down. It's just facing the opposite direction from the example on the right. Once we find the base, we will draw the wedges and dashes on those two carbons. The wedges and dashes will also be facing the opposite direction to show the stagger conformation. So in the example on the left side, I have a bond going upwards on the left, so I'm going to draw a wedge on the methyl and then a dash, which will have a hydrogen. The CL already has a wedge, so I'm going to draw a hydrogen with a dash. For every carbon, you can only have one wedge and one dash and two solid lines. In the example on the right, I'm going to do the same thing for the two carbons to show the wedges and dashes. I already have two methyls coming out of both, so I'm just going to make them both wedges and then put hydrogens on the dashes. You could also decide to do the opposite by putting the methyls on dashes, and that's alright as well because we can rotate these carbons to find the more stable conformation. To help see the wedge and dash model more clearly, we can tilt the structure so the base is flat too. For the example on the left, I'm going to tilt the base slightly 
so it will be flat and then I'm going to redraw the dashes and wedges. For the example on the right, I'm going to do the same thing. The wedge and dash model is just going to be facing the opposite direction. This could allow us to see more clearly where we're going to be looking down to draw the Newman projection for these wedge and dash models. The other groups can be drawn with skeletal drawings coming off the wedges and dashes, or we can give abbreviations for the different common groups. For the example on the right, I also have an ethyl group because it has two carbons coming off of the base. I could make that into a skeletal drawing by just making a line to show those two carbons, or I can say that this is an ET for ethyl. Abbreviations for the most common groups are listed here. Methyl with one carbon will be CH3 or ME. Ethyl with two carbons will be ET. Propyl with three carbons will be PR. Isopropyl where we have three carbons in a V shape will be IPR. And terbutyl where we have four carbons in a cross will be TBU. To draw a Newman projection, we will convert the wedge and dash model into the Newman projection by looking down the carbon-carbon bond specified in the question. The wedge and dash model shows us a side view of the compound, and the Newman projection will show us what the compound would look like looking straight down a single carbon-carbon bond. To draw the Newman projection correctly, we have to see if the wedge and dash model has the Y facing upwards or downwards for the front and back carbons. When the Y is upwards, like in the example on the left, the wedge and dash are pointing upwards. And on the other carbon, when the Y is downwards, the wedge and dash are pointing downwards. When the front and back carbons have opposite Ys, upwards and downwards, this will show a staggered conformation. We can use the same staggered conformation for the example on the right side because the Ys that we are looking at in reference to the arrow that we are looking down has the Y facing upwards in the front and the Y is downwards in the back. If we are looking at the wedge and dash model from the right side, like the example on the left, straight down the carbon-carbon bond, the wedges will be on the right in the Newman projection and the dashes will be on the left. If we're looking at it from the opposite direction, like the example on the right, where we have the arrow pointing in the opposite direction, we're going to have the wedges on the left side and the dashes on the right. This is because we have changed our perspective of looking down a carbon-carbon bond from the two opposite angles in the wedge and dash model, and the Newman projection will show that different perspective in both of the wedges and dashes flipping to the opposite side. To finish drawing these Newman projections from the wedge and dash models, I'm going to start with the left example where we're looking at the carbon-carbon bond from the right and I have my wedges on the right and the dashes on the left. On the front carbon, on the wedge, I have a CH3 group and on the back carbon for the wedge, I have a CL. On the left side for the dashes, I have two H's, one in the front and one in the back. The front carbon also has a CH3 group at the bottom and the back carbon has a CH3 group at the top. In the right example, I'm now looking down a carbon-carbon bond from the left side, so my wedges and dashes will flip. The wedges will now be on the left, and the dashes will be on the right. For my wedges on the left, I have a CH3 on the front carbon and a CH3 on the back carbon. On the right side where the dashes are, I have an H on the front carbon and an H on the back carbon. The front carbon also has an ethyl group pointing downwards, and the back carbon has a CH3 group pointing upwards. 